Hello everyone, this is Self Love You. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about the put downs of the narcissist and how they plant seeds of doubt into you that will grow into trees. And I'm going to tell you how they do this and why they do this. And I just want to discuss some of the ways that the narcissist in their dysfunction and in their insecurity will put down their victims, their targets, those that they are using for narcissistic supply. They put you down using insults, put downs, zingers, jabs, backhanded compliments. And in severe cases, if it's someone who is completely in their grasp, the narcissist can use, can, can cause the put down to encapsulate or be incorporated with your entire being so that, you know, if you're a child who grows up in a narcissistic environment, you may just be a put down. That may be what you feel you are because it's been so incorporated with your experience. A narcissist is a put down. This put down, these these subtle jabs, these covert jabs, these direct insults, these ways that they bring you down are like seeds being planted. And these seeds create these branches of thought in your brain that run wild and attach to other wounds, to cultural um, disrespect, to other core wounds, negative core beliefs, other insults that they've used or that others have used, they know how to land an insult. And they're awful. These are, these are not good people to be around because if you are weak to this and you have an opening, the narcissist will come and plant a seed in your weak area the fertile area for these insults, for these barbs, for these arrows that they want to plow into your being in order to take you down. So they want to plant these insults into a wounded place in your being. Fertile soil for disrespect, discounting, devaluation, places where you are going to be most likely to doubt yourself. The narcissist is very, very skilled at sussing you out like, like a cheap con artist, a con artist that's looking at for weaknesses in their people they're going to rob or robbers that are looking for a house that has open windows and doesn't have alarm systems. The narcissist will suss you out looking for wounds and looking for the perfect place to land these very powerful manipulative tools, okay? These insults are not just insults. They're much, much more sinister and much more damaging than you know. These put downs are very, very insidious and bad. And they use put downs regularly and they use these insults intermittently. They sprinkle the insults, the put downs, the backhanded compliments with flattery. So it depends on where you're at in the relationship and who, which narcissist it is. But depending on who, what, when, and where, or their purpose, or what they need from you at the time, or how they're using you at the time they will land their insult on you and either cause you to have a core wound that branches off into a big, huge tree and a forest within your own soul of self-doubt, or they'll cause you to insult yourself in advance or in the future or for the next abuser that comes along into your lives. So where do I want to start? Okay, put downs. There's so much to be said, but I'm just going to start. I'm going to start with telling you why would a narcissist want to plant seeds of doubt? What would be the benefit? Because they're all about what they can get. 
they're not, you know, I've been watching so many wonderful videos and it's just, everyone has just woken up so much and getting so much more knowledge than ever before. And I love it. It's beautiful. Welcome everyone to the conversation. This is my contribution. So why would a narcissist want to plant a seed of doubt in you? The planting a seed of doubt into your being, causing you to doubt yourself is very powerful for the narcissist. It does a lot of heavy lifting because what does the narcissist want to do? The narcissist wants you to see him or her as superior and they want you to hold their negative projections, their darkness, their shadow that they will are, they refuse to take accountability for. They cannot tolerate their own void, their own nothingness. So they wear this mask of superiority and they have to find a person who is wounded and doesn't know their worth that will carry the negative part, okay? They want somebody to carry their negativity. They want somebody that will accept and receive their bull crap. They want someone who will accept and receive their shadow that they can project all their negative onto. And when I mean, when I say all their negative, what I'm saying is their belief that the target is worthless is a projection of how the narcissist feels about themselves. So not only are they piling crap on you, but they're, they're piling real crap on you, like really bad stuff that's very damaging. And it is called abuse when someone does this to you. So the reason why a narcissist does this is because they have to find someone that can hold this expression of worthlessness in their midst so that they can feel superior, so that they can align themselves and judge themselves to be above this person. It's always better if they can get someone who's high, higher up than they, or, you know, they have to be at a certain level that they value. And those people, if they have a core wound that will allow the narcissist in and if they have a negative core belief that the narcissist can exploit, then they enjoy or they thrive or they they have to do this. They have to do this to someone somewhere. And the the most potent supply is someone who is fabulous and valuable and wonderful, but just has some self-doubt already within and maybe is healed, but just not quite there. You know, the more... The more beautiful you are, the more fabulous you are, the more the narcissist hungers for that supply, that energy, that life force that they do not have. They don't have any consciousness. All they have is a cycle, a cycle of destroying people over and over again, taking people down. That's what they do. And if you have an opening there, if you have some soil in your heart that is fertile ground to receive their negative projections and consider yourself worthless in their presence and consider them greater than and consider yourself less than, then you're going to be prey and you have healing that you have to do or you're going to be in pain. So why does the narcissist use the planting the seeds of doubt? Why does the narcissist plant seeds of doubt? What does it do? You know, it, it would be one thing if it were once, but these people are repeat offenders. They continually chip away at the self-esteem of those in their midst and the, their people because they always have to be leached onto someone. They're parasitic. They always have to be with someone, hurting someone. They're either love bombing them with, which is manipulation in order to get the person to trust them so that they can begin using them as a psychological punching bag. So they're either love bombing them or devaluing them or discarding them or causing chaos in their life. They're always messing with people. This is what gives them narcissistic supply, which is attention, which is admiration, or it could be fear and loathing. They, narcissists enjoy both attention in the good sense 
and they also enjoy your demise. They enjoy your sadness, depression. They want to leave their victims. They want to leave the people in their harem with nothing. They want you in a house, never going out of it. They they would they probably have a few people in their lives that have that are that just live in a house and never leave because they've destroyed them to that extent. The narcissist enjoys making you doubt yourself and planting seeds of doubt within your soul. Okay, why? Why would they why would this be such a great tactic and tool? Well, for one thing, is when you have when you doubt yourself, it weakens your self esteem. So when a narcissist insults you, dings you, zaps you, whatever you want to call it, backhanded compliment, it weakens your self-esteem. It can't help but to weaken your self-esteem. Even if you're a super strong person, you, you know, you would have to set incredible boundaries against someone who is a narcissist who's trying to take you over like this and trying to use you as supply and trying to use you as the worthless one and the less than person, okay? It weakens your self-esteem. So that's the number one thing. They would love to have your self-esteem weakened because it, when it's weakened, it makes you more easy to manipulate. If they plant seeds of doubt into your heart, you are gonna be much easier to manipulate and you're also gonna be very dependent upon them. If you doubt yourself, you're going to be dependent upon another person because you're going to be like, I, I'm really no good, so you must be the smart one. It also creates a trauma bond of sorts there. Whenever you have someone who's insulting you, even if it's you don't even know, it's covert insult, or maybe they are really good at getting you to insult and disrespect yourself. Maybe they, they see your weakness and they, they know how to pull it out. Um, it also makes, another thing that this will do for the narcissist is it makes them feel superior. It really feeds their supply needs for temporarily because, well, forever. If you feel horrible about yourself, the narcissist feels like the king or queen of the world. Planting seeds of doubt within you can cause you to have poor behavior or people please, or it can, it can cause you to have poor behavior that can that you will display that they can use during their smear campaign and they can you know work with their flying monkeys to make you look even worse so when they plant seeds of doubt whenever they they come in and nitpick at you and and make you feel bad about yourself and make you feel like you have to justify your existence it can cause you to have poor behavior that's perfect perfect fodder for the smear campaign that can go look what she did look at that it also makes you it makes whenever people put you know whenever a narcissist makes you doubt yourself and insults you makes jokes about you mocks you makes fun of you for any reason it makes you get into prover mode it makes you want to prove yourself it, it automatically mentally stimulates your need to show them that they're wrong. And this is especially true if you're a people pleaser and you've grown up in, in an environment where you were not respected. It can turn on that people pleaser mode. When the narcissist plants seeds of doubt, they do so very skillfully and it's not anything that's obvious generally. And it comes right after the love bombing phase. So you really don't know what hits you until the insults are firmly embedded into your system. It's a type of psychological warfare. It's a type of cult kind of, you know, really, it's kind of a trance. It's like they're, they are using neurolinguistic programming to cause you to doubt yourself even more because you end up taking that one little thing that they said about, you know, whatever it is. We're going to get into that in a minute. And then they, they build on it. They keep building on it and keep hitting it like a piñata. They want you to doubt yourself because doubting yourself serves their purpose and it harms you and they don't care. That's their whole goal is to destroy you. 
And so they can build on it, but not only can they build on it, you build on it yourself. This insult can stay with you long after they're gone. It can stay with you all day, all night, all week, all year, even after they've gone on to their next supply source. And it causes you to directly abuse yourself mentally. The seeds of doubt that the narcissist plant are planted within the inner critic, within your own inner critic. And really, they all team up. Your inner critic, your core wounds, your negative core beliefs, your anything you pick, you know, any kind of messaging that you've received from society, from culture. These are pretty complex. You know, just because someone tells you that, you know, your hair looks stupid, it can really really damage your soul. You, you've got to keep people like that that would even say such a thing about you far from you. Um, planting seeds of self-doubt into people. I mean, do you see what I'm saying? They're planting seeds of self-doubt with their insults. Their insults are made, are aimed at causing you to doubt yourself. Who on God's earth would want to do that? only a narcissist that I would never understand why anyone would want another person to doubt themselves. Why? I know why, but in my mind, it's like, why would anyone do that? That's so rude. That's so mean. And there's so many better things in this world to do with your you know, time, but that's not how they see it. They are here to destroy your life. And we're, we've got to get wise to this. So planting seeds of self-doubt, I just, that just really rings so brightly. Like what the heck would someone else want into myself? Like, this is myself. You stay in yourself. I'll stay in myself. You don't need to worry about myself. Okay. Um, they want you to experience the chaos of cognitive dissonance. They love you to be in chaos. And if you're doubting yourself, that's a great way to put you in chaos where you don't, nothing's really clear, where you're not in tune with your intuition, where you're chaotic, where you're out, you know, just dissociated and freaked out and you don't know which end is up and you have cognitive dissonance. Someone who's so nice to you has said something so cruel and this cruelty has hit so deeply and it must be you. You must be, it must be your fault that this person is claiming such things about you. It's because it's true. You know, all this mental anguish caused over one little negative comment that they make so strategically. They know exactly what they're doing. It also, when they plant seeds of doubt, it gives plausible deniability. So if they're planting seeds of self-doubt in you, there's, it, they can easily say, I didn't do anything. Oh, I was just joking. I didn't mean that. And you can't, you surely can't sit them down and say, okay, Mr. Narcissist, um, you just planted self-doubt in me because they're not that deep. They may be that deep, but they're malevolent. It's not, they're not deep for good reasons. They're deep in order to take you down and take advantage of you. So planting seeds of self-doubt does so much heavy lifting for the narcissist, giving them more complete access to you for longer and in all the ways that they enjoy, such as your pain and anguish, which they relish in your pain and anguish. They plant a seed of self-doubt. All they have to do is plant a seed. And this one little seed of self-doubt can connect deeply to your core self, branch out and combine with your inner critic and your core wounds and, and really just wreak havoc in your life. It grows into a plant. It grows into a tree. It, it commingles with childhood traumas. That's what this put down, these insults of the narcissist does. This is their purpose 
Okay, and it caused, okay, so now I'm going to get into how the narcissist will put you down. The narcissist is trying to make you feel insecure and less than them. They look for areas in which they perceive themselves to be better than you because they're constantly surveying the you as a person and looking for areas in which you're perhaps weaker than them. You know, maybe they have more money than you, so they're going to put you down for your lousy job, okay? They're going to put you down in areas that they have the upper hand, okay? Because that's going to exacerbate and underline the fact that you're less than them. And that's really going to help them on that superior purpose. That's going to help them feel superior. So they're going to put you down about things that you cannot improve, they're not just going to put you down about like if you're somebody who, you know, they're, they're only going to put you down for things that you can't improve or that would be extremely difficult for you to improve. You know, like you, you know, getting a facelift or something, you'd have to go and lose a hundred pounds. I mean, they're going to put you down for things that are, that you already probably feel bad about already they're going to go ahead and bring that up without shame without empathy without remorse they're doing that in order to help themselves and to get themselves farther along in their cycle because your pain your feeling of being less than will make you dependent and will will help with their you know fear of abandonment help keep you in place to to stay in pain for them and that makes them feel important and that's what they're seeking from the world just like heroin but it's not heroin it's your pain that they're seeking they don't put you down for what you're good at if you're solid in yourself and you have a high self-esteem they're not even going to want to be around you they're not going to want to be around you because I tell you what, if you are, have a high self-esteem that is going to be a narcissist detractor they want somebody who has a high self-esteem. I mean, they want somebody who has high worth but low self-esteem, doesn't know who they are, not connected to their intuition, not fully formed, doesn't have a whole self, has porous boundaries, boundaries, has porous boundaries that they are able to exploit. They don't put you down for what you know you're good at. They don't put you down for what you're good at. They put you down for gray areas. If you are a creative person and you're in creative pursuits where there's gray area, because, you know, in, in, in life, there's gray area. Sometimes you have to do things and take risks and you don't know if you're going to end up making it onto the other side, but you're just flying in the air hoping everything works out. They're going to put you down right there. They're going to attack that place. They're going to attack all creativity because anything that takes away from your attention from them causes wounding, narcissistic wounding, and they can't stand it. They put you down. They put you down. They want to get into your head. They want to they want to live rent free in your head, and the way they do that is by turning yourself against yourself and just, you know, disconnecting you from yourself because if you're all worried about whatever it is that they're trying to get you to doubt yourself for, if you're all worried about that, you can't think about the things in life that you need to do, like creating and doing and, and you know, living a purposeful life. You can't do that. And it makes you completely collapse. And it makes you so focused more so on the narcissist as a source of approval that you're never going to get. He's just going to put you down again or she. They want to get into your head by putting you down and making you doubt yourself. All the better if you've, you know, grown up in this environment and you're already putting yourself down. Ooh, potent supply. Great A. That's what they want. That That's like, if you already put yourself down or you already have weak areas that you just can't seem to overcome or feel complete in, you are so, you're just so delicious to the narcissist because they see, okay, 
I, I got this. Here's a house I want to rob. They don't even have a lock on the front door. All their jewels and valuables are out. They don't even know it. Oh my gosh, I'm going to take over this ugly house. Anyway, they're going to put you down when you're doing well. They're going to put you down. They, they're going to really amp up the put downs and insults if you are breaking free from the cycle, from their toxic cycle. They're going to really, ooh, they can't stand you having freedom and being autonomous and having agency. They're going to put you down hard at that point. But, uh, but usually it's subtle. It's real subtle. They put you down through triangulation. They put you down through uh, gaslighting. They put you down when you're up. They put you down when you're down. They get happiness out of putting you down. It gives them a pleasure. It makes them feel like the, a cool person when they can think of a little put down. Ooh, I really cut them down to size. And really what this is, is it's their own insecurity. Only an insecure person. Only a very sick, demented person would actually find pleasure in putting another person down. That's just so rude. If you already feel like they're better than you, if you already feel like you, you know, they're the prize, then you're going to be such wonderful supply they're, because you're going to be easy to put down. You're going to swallow their lies so much more easily. So you've got to watch out. You've got to always put yourself up there. You always have to realize that you're just as good as everyone else and you're bad to the bone and there's no openings for put downs. And uh, they can only put you down if you already agree with the put down, but they're really good at being able to rumble around in your mental closet or, you know, your emotional closet. They're good at asking you questions and, and, and checking you out and figuring out what you're insecure about. And then they make a mental note of it so they can use it later to zap it with their disrespect. They are purposefully coming after you because what, you have what they need. And what you have is you have unrealized worth. You are worthy, but you don't know it. And that makes you pray. And that makes you give your worth away without realizing it until it's too late. And that makes you a magnet for a narcissist. If you're even talking to a narcissist, you're putting yourself down because a narcissist is a giant put down. Everything out of their mouth is e either bragging about themselves or putting you down because they're constantly analyzing where they're positioned in the worth meter of life because they have no self and they have no worth in and of themselves. All their worth is in their image and the image that they project. And when you feel worthless, you become dependent upon the narcissist and you seek approval from the narcissist and you flatter and you give attention to the narcissist and that gives them a feeling of existing. And when you're not able to do that anymore, they're on to the next one. Like you are a used toilet paper. These people are not good. If you're talking to these people, you're putting yourself down. You're in, you're in bad shape. You got to get out of there. They look for areas where you feel less than and put you down for those things. They feel like crap, but can't express it. So they try to make you feel like crap so that they can feel better. So those are my notes about put downs. I'm sure I have other notes, but I just wanted to let you know that these put downs, these insults, these jabs, these backhanded compliments, these these ways that they will talk to you endlessly about your weaknesses and your your negative things in life. Okay, these hits, these punches, these grow within your soul. They don't just stay in one place. So if if you know it's like if they if they give you if they insult you about A, then your mind 
will create a route and it'll it'll add A to B to C to D to E. So these aren't just little put downs. They literally create branches in your thought processes that really need to be addressed and healed because they create an open just gestalt. And it's like the person who has insulted me is the one I need to approve of me. It really taps into past trauma bonds and creates trauma bonds because they may give you a hug and then insult you and then give you a hug and then insult you. And it teaches you in a sadomasochistic way that this is what love is. And so I must really be a bad person because this person's putting me down and I believe it. So it's kind of complex, a little bit complex. What do you think? I think so. I just had to get all this out. It just all of a sudden hit me all at one time. And I was like, I'm going to talk about this. So I just did. So you guys have a wonderful day. I hope you appreciate this. Love it. I hope you like, comment, share. Um, also, click the notification bell in case I do another audio. My name is Self. I love you. And I love you. Y'all have a wonderful day. Talk to you soon.